there. In this video I'm going to talk about how to use the Fluid Designer Curve add-ons. So I'm assuming that you've got Blender, you've installed uh, Fluid Designer and that you've also uh, installed the additional add-on curves which you can download from our website. Um, so I'm going to go to Add Curve and Enipa Curve. Now it's very important that the panel on the left here is open so you, know, you don't want that panel closed there, you want the panel open and you need to uh, just open up the panel at the bottom when you first add these curves. So there's my basic Enipa curve. So what is going on here and what can we do with it? Well if we look at the first value over here, 180, the resolution, um, if I press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode, that 180 effectively represents the number of control points here. But what's important to understand, and I'll just switch off the snap here, is that there's actually more than one curve wrapped around this object. It's actually wrapped around twice. So there are in fact sort of 90 control points, but there are two lots of 90s. Um, so what we really need to do, and, and I just need to reopen, re-add this curve because my properties panel here does disappear once I start doing things. So I'll just go to add curve and Enipper again. Um, if I click plus options, can you, if you see this value here for rounds, if I switch that down to one and then press the tab key, what we've got is 180 control points wrapped around here. Now notice this time I don't see a second curve underneath the first one. Now I would strongly recommend that generally speaking when you use these objects the first thing that you do is double check the rounds, change it from two or three whatever it is down to one. I mean there will be times when you might want to use it when you scale objects up but not for small objects that you might be working with with rings and pendants etc. And our grid size here at the moment is uh, 20 mil by 20 mil, and uh, so you know you don't want rounds at two. Now, in terms of this resolution, it's the number of control points. Now, if you if I type 30 there, that seems to work perfectly well. And as you can see, if I go into edit mode, I've got a lot less points there to deal with, and uh, I've still got a nice and smooth object. So. First of all, I would strongly recommend you uh, switch off um, the rounds or switch the rounds down to one and you can also reduce the resolution to reduce the number of control points. Now what are the other values that are here? Well, uh, height 0.5, well if uh, I look at it from this direction you should be able to see the blue arrow going up. The height is the Z scale, so as I change the height value it will change the Z direction. Now quite often I set that value to zero because that gives me a nice flat curve object to work with which is useful when making pendants and uh, earrings and things like that and it's very very useful if you're printing on uh, if you're 3D printing on an FDM printer. You don't uh, um, it prints nice and, and good on a, on a flat surface. You don't need any supports when you're printing an object like that. If you've got something like that you're going to need supports underneath that structure. Um, so it obviously does depend upon what you're making but that's what that height value does there. It alters the Z scale effectively. Now the scale box, the next one down, actually scales in the red and the green, the X and the Y dimension, so you can scale out there and you can see as you do that you change the pattern and from having no hole in the middle you can increase the size of the hole. And again remember that this grid is 20 mil by 20 mil um, so you can adjust the scale there until you get the appearance that you want and similarly with the height. Um, now the next values, the P and the Q, if you change the P to 3 and 4 and 5, let me just go to view and top view, you can see it better I think, I'll set that back to 3. Um, so with a P value of 2 you can see in this instance with this type of curve, an error curve, we've basically got what looks a bit like three leaves, then four leaves, then five, then six, 
etc. So changing the P and the Q values affect the appearance. Now the Q in this case with the N of it doesn't make any real difference or not any sorry not any difference in the flat direction but it does when you tilt it look. So if you're creating a three-dimensional object you might want to change the Q. If you're wanting, uh, if I just go to view and top, if you're wanting just a flat object it's the P value that you can change but that does vary from curve to curve. Essentially you just have to play around with these values until you get the object that you're looking for. And the same goes for the U and the V. As you can see as I change the U value it changes the appearance of my object. In this case with Enipa the V, as I change V it doesn't make any difference but that's not always the case with other curves. Okay so I'll, uh, I'll let me set that back down to 2 for the P and 3 for the Q so that was my kind of default one. So that's the uh, different parameters at the top. Now down at the bottom here, the first one, the bevel 0.5, that's effectively the radius. If I actually set this down to zero, you can see there's my raw curve. If I set a bevel of one, that curve is in essence a two millimeter diameter curve, uh, object wrapped around the curve. So 0.5 is the default setting that I set it up. That gives you a one millimeter object, which means that it will 3D print without any problems. Um, but you know, often you might want to set it back to zero and add your own bevel object. And you can do that in Fluid Designer by going to the object library, go to the very first one, 3D templates, cross sections. And uh, I'm not doing a bracelet or a ring here, so I'm just going to use this rectangular cross section and place that object on the screen. So that's just a a rectangular NURBS curve, one millimeter by one millimeter, and I can see that in the properties panel over here. So that's one millimeter by one millimeter. And uh, if I select my ENIPA curve and go to the properties panel and select that bevel object, you can see that it applies that rectangular cross section to my uh, ENIPA curve. And that's normally how I would work with these NURBS curves, these parametric smart objects. Um, now the next value down, the bevel resolution, um, I do need to put this back up to 0.5. If you set the bevel resolution down at zero, you can see you've not got a rounded cross section here. You've got uh, a more triangular, I think it is, or yeah, a triangular one at zero. Now if you look in the uh, header menu, and I'm scrolling the center mouse button here, we can see that there are only 2,600 faces here on this object at the moment, so top right of the screen. As you increase the bevel revolution, you should see the number of faces going up. So if I do it at bezel, bevel res of 4, you can see I've got uh, 9,500 faces, whereas a bevel resolution of 2 gives me 6,000 faces. But 4 gives a much more smooth appearance. But again, if you're actually going to add in a bevel object in the properties panel, you don't really need to worry about that 4 value, the default value. The next value down is the extrude, and changing the extrude basically does that to the curve. Um, so you can change the uh, appearance of the curve in that dimension. And then the final one, resolution, um, if I try setting that at 1, you can see I get a very, very chunky appearance. And 1 is basically, my mouse button's not working very well here. Uh, let me just delete that and just add the curve again. It should give me the same values. Um, a resolution of 1, well, as I increase it, you can see the object smooths out. If I set my resolution at the top down to something quite small, like 12, you'll see more of what's happening here. So I've got 12 control points at the moment with the resolution 12 at the top. As I increase the resolution at the bottom, what it does is it puts additional sections in between those control points. So the higher this is, the greater the number of sections between the individual control points. So that's, um, that's basically it about uh, this object here, the Enipa curve and curves in general.
Thank you for watching.